Hey everybody, we're back after a week off. Um, we're not with the usual crew with Chris and Luke because from scheduling conflicts, we'll be back to do the end of top 40 QBs next week. But this week, we're gonna do we're gonna look back at some of the best failures, some of the what if scenarios. That team that came so close to reaching the top but just fell short. And we're gonna start with the 2017 Jacksonville Jaguars. I don't know how many people remember this correctly. I know Charlie does, obviously. But um, the Jacksonville Jaguars climbing so high, getting to that AFC Championship game and coming... And then destroying my life. And you came one know. quarter short of a Super Bowl, really. Yeah. Um, looked like world beaters going into that game after beating the Steelers. But, um, yeah. Then yeah. the walls collapsed around me in the space of 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that team was star-studded, if you think about it. That Obviously, defence being the strong point with uh, Blaise Campbell mm. and Unique Ngokwe. And, yeah. That defence was yeah. second in every defensive stat that mattered. Completion percentage, passer ratings allowed, forced fumbles, touchdowns, sacks, picks... They either came first or second in everything that mattered. It was, oh, it was insane. Uh, you know, AJ Bouye and Jalen Ramsey at the corners. And then... Unstoppable. If, if you flip it straight to the other side of the ball, it probably wasn't like your top offence, but it was still... It could still move your ball. You know, Leonard Fournette was a breakout was, there that year. It was a case of give Fournette the ball to hammer it early. And once we've got a couple... A scores or a little bit of a lead, then you can let Blake Bottle do a bit more because that managed to keep Blake Bottle's turnovers, which was his big problem to a minimum. Because we didn't have to rely on him as much because we had that strong, powerful run game. Yeah, when you take the pressure off, it does make a quarterback more confident and relaxed. He has, that, he has this option to just take it back, have a chill, gather himself. Yeah. Because so, we weren't as reliant on would. Wide receivers were above average, you know. You had um, Alan Robinson and I forget the other one of the Alan brothers. Uh, Alan, um, Evans, that's it, yeah. Um, above average, you've you know they've sort of floundered in the careers other than, other than that moment. Yeah, but they looked great uh, if you go back to it. And it's just sort of you think what what if because the start of the next season, obviously, I don't. It didn't start out. Impressively, like, but it was like week three when you played the Patriots and you absolutely stomped on the Patriots the start of the next year, and it looked like that was it. You were ready to go. Yeah, the the, the one thing I'll always remember from that time is uh, there was a meme and it was the Thanos meme. It said, "But did you beat the Patriots? Yes. What did it cost? Everything." Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but was there I, a question? I think, I pin it down to Burnett went out early with injury, ended up missing six games, had a seventh because he got a one game suspension. Blake Bortles goes on a three and eight record, gets benched in week 12. This is just after he's had a three year contract extension. Yeah. Like everything just started going down. This is it, it's that. Sort of your organisation started to fall apart, really, I think. It came down to, for me personally, it all came down to the front office. Yeah. Because it started coming out later, well, a little bit later that year, uh, all the fans and stuff that was going on off field. Like, Dante Fowler was fined over 700,000 for missing yeah. mandatory treatment that weren't mandatory. This was on 25 occasions. Then they voided for net contract guarantees because he got suspended for one game. And this is all because Tom Coughlin decided to come in and try and rule everything with an iron fist. Yeah. Um... He, made, he made the players hate the fact that they were at that team. They made him hate that team. That's it. I think just like looking back to on the field, I think the only thing that was missing was that if you'd have fixed sort of the quarterback position with someone who went to free agency that year, it would have. I think that's it because it was as soon as the the on field 
play broke down, it came into light that everything else was happening. Yeah. Another thing with the on-field was as well, because we didn't have the run game, we had to rely on the on two people, yeah, which didn't work out. But also, teams had kind of adapted to our defence and weren't holding the ball as long before getting it out, which then exposed the fact that apparently, at that time, Jaguars players didn't know how to tackle. Well, it's, the coverage was fine, but they'd give it, yeah. they'd give it a quick ball, and no one could, yeah. no one could stop anything. No one could stop. It was really shaping into a Cinderella story that Jacksonville were going to march into Foxborough and, you know, finally dethrone the Patriots. But yeah, everyone dreamed. <laughs> well, dreamed. So, okay. so shoot out the week before with Pittsburgh once it was like 45-42 yeah, yeah. it finished and it's like going into Pittsburgh in a playoff atmosphere that's somewhere you don't want to go as well and they did it yeah well I remember uh, saying to, like, I remember saying to you guys at the time watch this watch this yeah. it was just that moment it's like starting is it time to believe and like I say you, you, you came close was it 24-20 yeah. fell in Foxborough and that's obviously that's been a repeating story for God knows how many years now. That if you're going into there for an AFC Championship game, yeah. you're you automatically at a disadvantage. Yeah, it's. Um, I think I think that was it. That last game, you just um, you can't argue with it. You got sort of they was out coached and uh, by possibly one of, like the greatest coach of all time. So you can't argue with it. Um, Tom yeah. Brady yeah. was. I had an unstoppable year that year. We did. Long story short, we got beat. Yeah. Just did. There was nothing we could do. We got beat by a better yeah, team. It's at least some sort of situation, but... Yeah. It's always there. You came so close, but so far. Yeah. I, I, think is, I, feel, I feel like we're still trying to dig ourselves out of the hole that has formed since then. Yeah. Yeah. It does seem like it has just sort of snowballed. Because even, even after the 2018 season, when everything went so downhill, 2019, we signed Falls and think, yeah, this could be this could be one of the moves we make. Breaks his collarbone in week one. I was going to say, week 11 and does nothing. Ramsey has back issues because he's so sick of the team and goes. We've traded away Boyer, Campbell, Falls, near enough everyone. Coughlin's been fired and we found out that over 25% of the complaints to the NFLPA were about the Jaguars institution. That's 25% of the entire NFL's complaints. Yeah. That's enough. Um, if that's not, so for, for me, as I said originally, it all comes down to that front office. Obviously, the um, <coughs> Patriots going on for um, a Super Bowl, but... Um, this was sort of during the year that Patriots were ruling everything and they managed yeah. to stop the team uh, the year before this as, as well, which was obviously um, the Atlanta Falcons, who I think everyone believed were going to win the Super Bowl. Yeah. And how could you not with the offensive firepower they had that year? And all it yeah. took was one half for even a Patriots half, it to break even a half, the it was one quarter. Yeah, it was one quarter. Yeah, it was the it was the final quarter. It wasn't even a half. Uh, it was just insane. It was like, yeah, they got to get two two point conversions, and they get the first one. You thought it's a bit lucky, and then they're going for the second one, and they get it, and you start he's going, "This isn't happening." I just remember <laughs> everything in the world other than Pat's fans going, "Come on, come on!" And then the final quarter just going. Yeah, you'd, you'd never seen a rain go from so loud to so quiet. If I if I hadn't seen it, I'd have never believed it. Oh no, no, it was it was unbelievable. But um, obviously, not here to talk about it. <laughs> the Patriots. Were here to talk about the the Falcons from that year, who obviously were riding high through everything. You know, they came, they demolished the Packers in the NFC Championship game. Yeah, um, they had the NFL leading. Yeah, Matty Ice in his MVP year. and Yeah. I feel like as well, they were one of those teams going into the season where you think, eh, they might do a bit of something. Yeah. But then they come in and do what they did and you're yeah. like, oh. Well, you can yeah. pick into the... Because uh, obviously that was Carl Shanahan's offense back then. 
Yeah. And if you can see how good it was back then, and you know he transferred it into a head coaching role in San Francisco now. See, I personally, I personally think that the loss in the Super Bowl was Shanahan's fault. They got conservative. Yeah, they just they never got has, the momentum back. He had the lead, and all you had to do there was uh, when was what was it? I think they uh, they were on a third and one or a fourth and one, and it was either run or punt. It was the third down, wasn't it? And then they, uh, they got sacked and pushed Yeah, yeah, sacked for a loss of 12. Yeah, yeah. Forced a fumble. Yeah. But I yeah. feel like he made a few calls that were questionable in that game. Like, why, yeah. are you, why are you going for a deep pass when you're trying to whittle the clock down? You know, yeah. run it. There, there was a point where they could have kicked a field goal and that would have actually yeah. diced it in the long term and they didn't do it at all. Do you think... They tried to punt it and get the Patriots stuck in like their turn and so all you had to do was kick the field goal, stick a few more points on and the game's done. I yeah. think this is this is obviously um, all benefit of hindsight and when you look back on Carl Shanahan, he, he might be defined by that game in particular, but he is also possibly is one of the younger head coaches in the league and he's yeah. gonna have time to sort of learn from his mistakes. Oh yeah. But, I think one of my favourite things from that entire thing, though, was um, there was an interview with uh, Chris Long, who's a defensive yeah. end for the Pats, and they said, do you feel like the Falcons choked? And he goes, uh, I think it was more, we took it, and you could kind of see everyone's face in the room going. <laughs> <laughs> Did well, you really just... I suppose, like, the sort of the what if scenarios that come off this one are if they win that Super Bowl, does Kyle Shanahan stay there? And I don't think, and they might get over that Super Bowl hangover, which seems that they're still on because they lost yeah, all yeah. That, that offensive firepower. Um, obviously, Dan Quinn's defense never got to the same way that it was. Um, like those what ifs what if that team stays perfectly together do they go to the Super Bowl the next year yeah no no because in 2018 Jags came out with basically the same team and look what happened there's no guarantees in this <laughs> I know there's no guarantees but um, no but I think as well on the other side that game is one of the games that people will use to cement Brady as the goal oh yeah oh yeah it was, that was, I think to, that was to, to come back from such a deficit is yeah. in itself such a big achievement, regardless of if they choked or not. I don't remember as a big part of that comeback offence as well. Like, he made that miraculous catch on one of the drives. Yeah. Yeah, Julian Edelman. And I think that, that was, um, obviously, I think that was the culmination of um, years of, because the Patriots, they were all they were winning, but they never seemed like world beaters. Yeah, they never seemed like you was going to go up against someone that was going to destroy you, no matter what happened. Until that moment, and that sort of seemed like, all right, this is, this is it now. Tom Brady's the goal, and we're living in this yeah. era where they're just going to win, no matter what. Yeah. And as hard as like it is to watch them like winning constantly, especially if you're not a Patriots fan, you get a bit sick of it. But you think you'll look back on it in 20 years and you're like, I got to watch that. And obviously that's going to be a yeah. big piece of history. You just got to kind of cherish the moments, I guess. Yeah. Uh, back to the Falcons. Yeah, we keep going back to the Patriots, don't we? So, <laughs> I think <laughs> actually, when we were going to say um, they started a bit quiet and then they turned into that team throughout the season. It was early-ish on in the season, maybe a bit halfway point. The Packers went to Atlanta and I missed most of that game because I was at Wembley and I was driving back up and it was just like, I was thinking yeah they've won a few games but uh, they're the team and like I said Matty Ice led a, a, a driver less than two minutes ago and scored with like 15 seconds left to beat the Packers and at that point I think I was thinking right, okay they do mean business here and yes. it just went from there didn't it that's it if you, if you go back not long ago it's uh... Matt Ryan was this this quarterback that anyone, if he was down by a field goal with less than two minutes left, everyone would want him leading the drive. Yeah. yeah. Carmel did, did great in the game. Drives. 
I mean, I'll always have a bit of a personal grudge against him, but that's purely from a Madden game. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, obviously that, and then Julio Jones has always been Hall of Fame. Julio Jones has always been one of the top receivers in the league. Can't knock him. He's For definitely me. top, no, top he's, two. He's, he's insane. I think it, it all seemed to come together just to fall apart right at the very end, as is sort of the story for most of this. Um, yeah. And obviously, it's like sellotaping a fiber together because it ripped. <laughs> and then as you're giving it to shop on it, sellotape falls off. <laughs> but, um, and then obviously, we, we move back again. And um, we got to, uh, you could probably point out. Don't want to be like <laughs> annoying, but like a couple of Packers teams that came super close, but sort of fell short during this time. Seven years. I think the 2014 Packers are the one that sort of seemed the most likely to win a Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, everything was going really well. Um, I think this was was this one of Aaron Rodgers' MVP years. It was MVP season. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. We they lost it with two minutes left. Jordy Nelson. Obviously, we was up at half time and we was winning 19 7 with three minutes to go. 19 14 with two minutes left on the clock. <sighs> Jamaicas. <laughs> I mean, I think that was, um, that was it. it was, I think Aaron Rodgers was obviously white hot all season. Oh yeah, looking absolutely brilliant. Um, the offense, uh, Eddie Lacy, was this? This was Eddie Lacy's rookie year, wasn't it? Uh, I think so. He, he had a class year either way. Jordy yeah, Nelson was his. Well. I think it was his rookie year, and he won Rookie of the Year that year. Um, Jordy Nelson was always Aaron Rodgers' number one pick to throw to. <clears throat> always open, more or less. Randall Cobb again. Another fan yeah, when he was with Packers. Do you miss your offensive line has always been solid in Green Bay. I don't think I've ever seen a bad one. No. It's, it's never been too bad. I mean, bar when we get a couple injuries and then it's is what it is with rookie guys and second stringers. As long as you've got your starting line though, I feel like you've never had a you've never been in a bad position when it comes to your, your line. Yeah, and it's always been good enough to like hold Rogers up when he's been injured and he's come back into a game hobbling. And it's like it says a lot really when you know Rogers can come back in hobbling and you know your line's gonna hold up. Yeah, they're always able to give him just what he needs in that time. Yeah. I think um, what's just like sprung to mind is obviously this is the, the Des Carter year. Yeah, I was just about to mention that. <laughs> but he didn't, did he? So. Well, um, <laughs> we could go on about that one for a bit. <laughs> I'll argue to the death that he dropped it. That was the ruling. That was the ruling. That was a, a very, um, very crazy playoff that year. Was that the divisional round? I think it was. Yeah, because um, in the first round, we had the, in the wild card, we had controversy with was it Calvin Johnson missing a catch on Dead yeah or yeah yeah because it was like yeah the week before the Cowboys got away with something and the week yeah. after it went against them I think about that. Well, it wasn't it's... No, I can't remember what the call was something about the clock expiring maybe but yeah that was a a what if year um the Packers played the Patriots in that season earlier on, it's like week seven, and the Patriots came to Green Bay and the Packers won 26-21, so then everyone wanted a Rodgers-Brady rematch. Got red hot, everyone was thinking, oh my God, it's going to happen. Fell apart, didn't we? Like, so badly. But at the yeah. same time, the thing that happened to you with the Seahawks happened to the Seahawks. Yeah. Think next year. Should have run it. Oh no, I, I, yeah. am, I am mistaken on those playoffs. I'm just uh, I'm just looking at the bracket here. It was it wasn't the same year, but um this was um, an interesting year to be honest. Looking at some sides, it was the year of the Indianapolis Colts Kansas City game. If everyone remembers that Andrew Luck diving over in the last 
Yeah. Wasn't that like a big comeback, or was that just yeah. where they went too tight? Oh, they blew like a massive lead, didn't they? Yeah, but um, obviously this led into the Seattle and the and Patriots Super Bowl, but it's just a what could have been, the fact that we could have had the Rodgers-Brady Super Bowl that we now can no longer have, that I think everyone wanted to see for so long. Yeah. I think, I think the appeal of that is it is just two QBs who yeah. can either throw it for 10 and it goes for 70 or throw it for 70. Yeah. Yeah. Because they both just have that ability, you just want to see who comes out on top from it. To be fair, that was basically how Rodgers ran that offence. He could throw it for 70 and have Nelson open in the end zone that year, or he could just throw it over the line to Cobb and he'll just run straight up the field for 70 yards. And it's if in doubt, Eddie Lacy, go on, jump over that yeah. line. Yeah. He's just had such a good year. It's a shame, actually, how he just never really recovered and he just got fat, didn't he? Okay. <laughs> cheeseburger. This is a. Uh, I think the other sort of interesting thing is a what if from that. So if Mike McCarthy wins the second Super Bowl with Green Bay, is Mike McCarthy still in Green Bay? Yes. I don't see as much tension developing between Aaron Rodgers and Mike McCarthy at that point. No. Like I say, he got a lot of stick towards the end, but you couldn't really argue what he did. We won the North countless times, a few years in a row, and we made the playoffs like eight or nine consecutive years. And like I know I saw we've not made the Super Bowl and we blew out some games, but those are really good stats. And to think that they were all like winning seasons, we weren't undefeated at home for like a season and a half. Yeah. He got more stick than I thought he deserved, personally. See, I personally think you can put that Green Bay loss on one person's shoulders. I know that's a bit of a ooh, but and I've got it here because I was researching before. <laughs> Fourth quarter, two minutes, nine seconds left. Nineteen fourteen to Green Bay. So Seattle side went side for an onside kick. Yeah. yeah. Got recovered, and your third string tight end fumbled it. Yeah. Um, so all yeah. you have to do is get that ball, and you've got it. Because all he had to do was block because Jordy Nelson jumped up behind him to grab it. You let the receiver catch the damn ball. Yeah. Brandon yeah, Bostic. Jordy Nelson was in the in that receiving lineup as the catcher. Yep. Um I think it was, it was obviously a bit of like just a rush of blood when your third string tight end goes, This ball's coming to me, I'm gonna catch it, I'm gonna save this game, we're gonna Yeah, he was trying to he was trying to play a hero ball, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. But obviously it's um we keep going back to the Patriots, but to use the Patriots motto of do your job. Yeah. If you do your job, then everything else goes right for you. Yeah, your job was to block and let Nelson yeah. catch you. And then we no, I absolutely believe you can pin the entire thing on him. <sighs> I think there was a few mistakes, Just, I think. Yeah. No, yeah there was, there was, I there guess was that was the, mistakes, that was the defining moment. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Just that's defensive blunders, it was... 16 nil up, yeah, and they went for a fatal field goal, and then they noticed the defense was off on that, and it would end up throwing it for a touchdown. And that just obviously started the entire thing. The fake field goal. Well, it this, was just, this was in the era where um, obviously it's a legion of boom and Seattle were put um, in the era where Seattle seemed to have Green Bay's number in the sense of something would go wrong in the game because obviously the fail Murray wasn't one before this, <coughs> yeah. Um, and it just seemed like they always something just twisted at the end, and it always seemed like the Seahawks got the better of the Packers. Yeah, it's been a recurring thing because <laughs> obviously me and you watched that game together. <coughs> going, going into that game, I, I was very optimistic. I said I can't see us winning. Obviously, you're going into Century Link. It's Legion of Boom. The atmosphere, number one seed, <coughs> can't see them winning. <coughs> Going through that first half, obviously kept them shut out. It was up 16 0. Yeah. And you kept saying to me, he was like, You're going to the Super Bowl. And I just kept saying, No, no, no. <laughs> then Russell Wilson throws his fourth interception. And I lose. And I'm like, Oh my God, we're going. And then he just fell apart from there. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit of a roller coaster of emotions, to be honest. Well, it's all right because Ben's going, You're going to the Super Bowl, Adam. Like, Where? Yeah. Where? Hey, we're going to mess it up somehow. <laughs> 
Watch this. Watch. Watch now. I know, and you think Wilson throwing four interceptions in a championship game, and they still won. You know what? You, yeah. you completely forget about stuff like that, considering Russell Wilson just doesn't throw interceptions now. It's not part of his yeah. game. You forget that he could have such a bad game. This is sort of the perfect transition into possibly the greatest missed call in NFL history of the 2014 Seahawks. One play That's away from a Super Bowl. The closest you can get one play away from a Super Bowl. I'll still never... To, I, I will never, as long as I live, understand the choice that went into that. You have the best running back in the league. You have the best running back in the league. You're on the one-yard line and you don't go wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't know why you question. Ignoring the fact that he can truck through seven people with exactly. no blocks for, what, 40 yards at least, and you're not giving right. him the ball on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> you just, he is a blunder. I, I, a, a, I don't... A big, I'm, oh. a big what if, because that would have made the Seahawks back-to-back Super Bowl champions. Yeah. After oh. demolishing Denver the previous year. Um, this was... I mean, you can sort of talk about this Seahawks team... From 2014 to 2016, they were, you know, the Legion of Boom was together for quite a few years. Yeah, past few years, one or two years left. So, yeah. um, but it was this team that were obviously they weren't this offensive powerhouse, but they could score. They could score really well, actually. And then, but they just shut you out on defense. Yeah, um, it was. Obviously, insane to watch, and that was when Central Link became this thing where it was almost the loudest stadium in the league. And they did hold a record. The, speech, I think. I think it's the it's the Chiefs in it, though. Yeah, or, well, yeah. I think Seattle set a record, and then yeah. Kansas beat it not long after. But yeah, yeah that, that that was like an absolute fortress of a stadium. You did not want to go there. I feel like that was one of the games on the schedule when you're looking at your schedule, you've just got it and you're going, yep, yeah, oh. yeah, that's oh, awesome. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, that, was no, that, was, that was Green Bay's first game of that, that season, actually. We, we travelled to Seattle in week one and lost. Yeah. That was that was on my birthday, that. <laughs> what a day. What a day. <laughs> and then we lost to him, obviously, in the championship game. If you want to cry, we'll take a minute. <laughs> we can pause then. Ah, it's fine. But um, yeah, I can this, talk about it now. The Seahawks team are just in like amazing to look back on because uh, Marshawn Lynch obviously being the number one running back in the league at the time. They like skills. Um, yeah, so a yeah, lot. <laughs> the receiving core obviously wasn't anything special, but uh, Tyler Lockett it, and Percy Harvin and. They all worked within the system. They did, they did the job. As well. he, was, he was quite reliable, actually. It wasn't See. a case of they were the best options at that position. It was just a case of they, were, they did the job and they did it efficiently. They did exactly what needed to be done when it needed to be done. Yeah, um, they could sort of, I guess you want to say falter a bit, or they didn't have to have stellar weeks every week because they had that Legion of Boom defence. And you yeah. knew that was just going to keep you in a game no matter what. That team just like, obviously had a lot of attitude as well because he was always like Richard Sherman talking smack. Uh, yeah, uh, Richard Sherman, Cam Chancellor, Earl Thomas, Bobby Wagner. Yeah. These are these are people that... Just saying it now as a defensive yeah. player, I'm getting tingles. So it's, <laughs> it's like so someone went on Madden and created an ultimate team and they all started playing for Seattle. That's... Yeah. A, a group of mates made my players. Yeah. <laughs> and then I and just sent them off. Yeah, yeah. And just joined up and went, watch this. The equivalent of real life like, pro clubs. I really like Pete Carroll as a coach, actually. Yeah. yeah I've always liked his, uh, sorry, like his mental attitude towards the game, and he's always like, makes sure, you like the team is like a brotherhood and stuff, and always looking at it. He's just a very. Uh, Energetic coach as well. 
I think obviously Pete Carroll's going to go down as one of the um, better coaches in the league. Um, he's obviously had some help with getting Richard Sherman and obviously inheriting that defence. But obviously it's what you do with the players. You can have great players and do nothing. Yeah, like I said, I think that comes down to his mindset and the way he was with the team as well. Yeah, obviously fantastic coach and I'll always put him I'd always put him top five in the league at the minute. Oh yeah. Um one thing I will say about the player though that cost them a Super Bowl is on the flip side, fantastic defensive play. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely incredible coverage, exactly the right spot, exactly the right play. It uh, came out yeah. afterwards that uh, they tried to do it in practice, that play. They'd seen it on tape. And who was it? Was it Butler that made the interception? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, apparently, like, he could not do it in training. Like, no matter how many times he tried, he couldn't do it. And then, obviously, the one time you need to do it, came up with a big play. And you just think, it's, it's bonkers. See, that's, that's one of my things. You can practice something as much as you want, but it's completely different once you're in that game situation. In the game situation, yeah. Like your routes may change or your coverage may change according to the player, but no matter what you're doing in training, you can't simulate that game environment. It was also, that moment is just fantastic coaching because you can go back and watch the sideline footage and watch them be immediately call an audible because they know what's coming. Yeah. yeah. But, um, so we have sort of two more teams on our list. Um, we'll go... Very quickly, we'll run through the 2012 49ers, which is obviously the Colin Kaepernick year. Um, being this, uh, Colin Kaepernick bursts onto the scene and they go into the that Super Bowl versus the Ravens. The Harbour. He almost, the yeah, the Harbour versus Harbour, and he almost leads that comeback to win. Um, obviously, there isn't too much. They look like a good team with Alex Smith during the season and Alex Smith got injured but it was capping it yeah. that firecracker for him he, he came in and he was just outstanding yeah they played he, the he just put up numbers yeah he played That's the Packers in the lead up to it. either the wild card or the divisional round and Kaepernick just ran all over us we could not contain him I feel like he's one of them people he was just he's just naturally good at yeah being a quarterback yeah um Obviously, the, t- the two what ifs for this one are so if they win that Super Bowl, then I don't think Kaepernick ever gets benched. No, no, no I don't because it would have been a really good comeback as well. I think with him like, winning the Super Bowl, he doesn't get looked at as that player that just can't do it, he gets looked at as that oh, well, he is a Super Bowl winner. I can't. I can't just bench him. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. He's, he's, he he kind of instead of being, oh, he's the guy that won that Super Bowl. He's now he's that guy who's good, but yeah, he yeah. couldn't finish the job. It's sort of the same reason like they couldn't bench Eli Manning for so long. He, he's that guy who could, who did win Super Bowls and yeah. great stories. You know, fans fell in love with him, and obviously. I'd say the second one is that would um, Harbour still be coaching? Which so I feel I feel like that game started a, a divide between you know sort of the head office and Harbour, which led him to go to Michigan. Yeah, he think he it's a tough one. Like obviously, you think yeah, he would stay there because of the success and stuff, but he did always. Displays interest in going back to college coaching, didn't he? So it's whether it's, it's more of a if if he did stay, how long? Yeah, maybe another year or so. But yeah, I agree with that. I, think, I don't think it's a case of Woody off, like you said. I think it is how long. Yeah, it's he was yeah. just got to go at some point. If he did have that interest, then yeah, he probably did want to go back. Um. That 49ers team, I can still like. I still sort of remember that game that Kaepernick came into the playoffs against Green Bay because um, I watched. Because I think I remember, I remember watching the first ten minutes of it or something like that, um, and 
again, Aaron Rodgers looking white hot and he's dancing all over the field and throwing touchdowns after he's managed to hold onto the ball for 15 seconds or whatever. And then I went to sleep and I woke up and the stat line just basically said that the 49ers destroyed the Packers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was it. It was you, you couldn't win because it was running all over us when we played actual coverage or then if we played to contain him, there was always a receiver open and they had like Frank Gore at running back and it was just... Yeah. I think that was another aspect of Kaepernick. You, it didn't matter what the defence did, he always had an option. Yeah. yeah. And then, obviously, the Patriots have been, have been quite a big theme throughout. It seems only, only fitting that we... Um, we talk about the Patriots' biggest failure, um, the 18-1 and one New England Patriots. Oh, my God, did someone create an ultimate team? Yeah. See, at first, me, I was a bit confused on which season you meant, because I, I thought you meant the season, I think it was after, when Brady did yeah. his knee. So I, I thought you were referring to that at first, and then you went, no, no, I didn't what I said, oh. No, that one. <laughs> oh, that one, oh, that. The one that bring, brings Ben great joy. <laughs> it was, I mean, it brings me great joy because we're still the only undefeated team, but. Um, Jesus Christ. Whoever decided to put Randy Moss with prime Tom Brady need shooting <laughs> there's that stat line from um, he played the Patriots versus Dolphins game uh, from that year and I think it was Tom Brady had thrown four passes for four completions for four touchdowns for 158 yards <laughs> it's not that is it you, you're not allowed to do that <laughs> All right. It's kind of like when you play Madden on the easiest difficulty. <laughs> no, it's like playing Madden on the easiest difficulty and then adjusting all the sliders. Yeah. <laughs> so your QB's arm power is 99, his accuracy is 99, and defenders are two. And then, yeah. for whatever reason, you've got Randy Moss as well. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know whether that team needed Randy Moss, but it had it. <laughs> yeah, but they had it. <laughs> That team had um, a great defensive line as well, didn't it? Oh, yeah. Just... Obviously, another Belichick defence. Yeah. Um, we do have to say this team was... Um, they do... This team still holds the record for the most consecutive wins, which is... Um, was They had a 20-game win streak or something like that, which was yeah. broken by... <clears throat> obviously, by uh, the New York Giants. Was it the Giants, yeah. Oh, I'm thinking the regular season, sorry, not Super Bowl. Um, the helmet catch, um, going down forever in history. Uh, I saw the other day that that helmet catch was his last professional career catch. Oh, well, what a, what a good way to end it. <laughs> what, a good way, what a way to go out, like. What a belter. That, that's one for top grandkids, isn't it? Let me tell you about my last catch, right? Yeah, then you got to Tom Brady's last pass as a Patriot and it was pick six to lose the playoff game. Yeah. Do you reckon he texts him about it? Yeah. <laughs> Keeps messaging him, what did you put on your helmet? <laughs> How did your last play go? Oh. It's just what? the craziest player. Uh, it was just a fairy tale. It's, to... it's one of them one in a million and again, if you didn't see it with your own eyes... Yeah, you'd never like, believe it. Manning was just about to get sacked as well. Yeah. And he just pops out, <laughs> uh, slings the ball, and you're like, Where is this going? Obviously, <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've both seen it. There's um, you can find footage of the day before uh, or whatever they were practicing. And David Tyree caught one catch in practice, he dropped every other ball that was thrown to him. And then in the Super Bowl, he catches that. I, I honestly thought you were about to say there was a video of training the day before and he was catching passes in his helmet. <laughs> I thought he was about I thought he was about to tell me he's in training like that. <laughs> it was his secret weapon. 
<laughs> Just some, some guy like, like, like boys. all the kids yeah. doubted him, but he said, "Watch this! <laughs> I'm gonna make one of these." <laughs> yeah, Mel, Mel, Mel. Mel. Don't do it. All I need is the right QB to be just slightly inaccurate enough. <laughs> <laughs> I can catch it with my helmet. <laughs> do us a favour. When you throw this pass, just close your eyes. <laughs> it does seem like every Super Bowl that has the Patriots in it has an unbelievable catch. You have like the helmet catch. You had Edelman's catch in the comeback. You had the interception catch. I'm, I'm, I'm still convinced that Edelman catch is illegal in some way. <laughs> I don't know how, but it's definitely illegal. Somewhere there is a law. Yeah. It's great, yeah. Like, obviously, when you watch like the um, America's Game documentaries and it does the on-field commentary and ugh, the Falcons players like, that wasn't a catch, and Adam was like, no, it was, look. And they're just like, what the hell? That's, that's one of the reasons, my, one of my favourite games to watch ever is any time it's Pats versus Miami, because you never know what's going to happen. There's always something mad. Miami does some bonkers play on the last play yeah. of the game. Scores at 90. Or, or, or Pats put Gronk at safety and expect it work. <laughs> yeah. I still maintain Gronk goes into training, in even game days, and goes, yeah, I'm playing this today. You don't got to say no to him, are you? No. <laughs> Um, I've just looked up um, so Brady's stats from this 2007 season. Just um, so he threw for four, 4,806 yards, just shy of 5,000. So um, then he threw 50 touchdowns. Um, he had a passer rating of 117.2. Jesus. <laughs> um, and he, an interception to t- a touchdown to interception ratio of 6.25 to 1. <laughs> it's not right. That's not. That's also illegal somewhere. It's like it's so if if you did that in like every game, it's like yeah, we've got an interception. It's like yeah, but he's already thrown six. Yeah. So <laughs> we are way behind here, pal. Obviously, I think this will be the team that goes down as the um, the biggest one that should have done it. Yeah. Yes. It just didn't. Everyone wrote the Giants off before that game. It wasn't even like, oh, they're in the Super Bowl, they've got a chance. It was like, no, the Patriots... No, it was, yeah, it was, it was a case of they're going in and everyone was going, you might as well not show up. Yeah, yeah this is a dumb match. The Patriots are going to win by at least 20. Yeah. And then, obviously and then, not. Yeah. And then did it a few years later to come again. Obviously, the, but this stuff is obviously why we love watching the NFL. Oh, yeah, it's moments like that. But, um, yeah, I suppose that, that wraps it up for the teams that we've we've got down. Um, Charlie, do you want to chuck in anything else about the Jags? Because you wrote loads of notes, and I don't want to leave, leave you feeling... Go on, have a, have a ramble. I'll have a ramble. Well, the only other thing I've really got to say is uh, tank this year, Trevor Lawrence, Super Bowl. Let's go. That's my game plan. <laughs> Big Trevor Lawrence. Here we go. Sunshine. The golden man. Some we'll guy from um, Remember the Titans is going to the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> you heard it here first. I'm calling it now. I'm calling my shot. <laughs> Come a long way from them high school playoffs. I think. <laughs> I mean, well, no, we can talk that. about that. We could just uh, we could just talk about how Ryan Gosling is an absolute liability as a corner for an hour. All women love him, but will not acknowledge that he is an absolute liability at cornerback. <laughs> Ryan Gosling's so hot, but he can't cover to save his life. I know, yeah. We have, we have, we have as soon as he completes the coverage, I'll like him. Yeah. <laughs> what a movie. Um, yeah. He's got to go watch it, him now, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Matt, 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 go and turn it on now. Uh, but thanks for joining me on um, such short notice this week. Hey, um, no thanks for having us. I'll, uh, I might bring you back in a few weeks if you want to participate. We've got a quiz episode coming up. Yeah, I need to redeem myself, don't I? So. Yeah, you need, to, <laughs> you need to be back. <laughs> uh, if not, yeah. here's the jokester. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you later. Uh, I'll see you in a bit. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to like and subscribe for more content from us. And check out all of our social media links down in the description, Spotify, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
Remember to watch all the other content on The Bandit Show. And see you next time.